Hello, it's Paul, and we're still playing Shenzhen I.O., the puzzly electronics Arduino circuit designing game from Zaktronix. So let's get on with it today. Well, this episode is going to be on passive infrared sensor. Right, a quick look at what we need to do. Um, so this is new. Um, this is um, RTC, a simple input connected to a DT2415 clock providing the current time. This sensor is connected to an infrared sensor. This is the alarm, this is the output. The alarm should be turned on whenever the sensor reads at or above a value of 20, but only between the specified on and off times. The on and off times are set by the operator using switches that can be read as X bus inputs and use numerical values compatible with the DT2415. Right. So, this is the on time. Let's have a quick look at the verification. So, the clock starts at 84, goes to 85, 86, 87, 88, 92, 95, and drops to zero. So the clock is using a number between zero and 95. So there's 96 individual values in that. Sensor input here is jumping, yet, and we need to get 20 or above, and the alarm output, obviously, is what we're going for these and these for each run of this so stay obviously the same now problems this on time is greater than the off time so it means we need to deal with the situation where the alarm is you know if you imagine a line here a time we're going on at a particular time for that and staying on until we get to the off time or I presume there will be ones that have the on time less than the off time so we need to handle that case as well so that's you know it's not always and as you can see the timer the RTC clock is already starting at 84 so we don't always start with zero get an on time sort of at 20 and off time at say 43 and have to turn on and off the sen the, the alarm functionality between that time we we can start off with a time already high, which then drops back to zero here, and we can have an on time greater than the off time. Yay. I think it's time to bring out the big boys. Right. So this is a P circuit, so that's going to go into that. Yes, I can move these, so I can put him there and there. I can grab the sensor for P0. Now, what I don't have is another P, so rather than write my own thing, I'm going to use this not recommended part, as one does. So what this allows me to do is if I send an XBuzz value out on X2, I think I used this in one of the other puzzles, then it sends that value out here as a pulse. Now it's not quite the same thing. I can't pick a value. It's either on or off. So it can only be used for these sort of alarm type situations. So I, bet, I think for this zero socket I send one that's zero that's ten that's a hundred you can turn these inputs and outputs off by sending almost what looks like a binary code so 100 would be on off off 111 would be on 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 you know 10 would be just that one on 110 would be just these two I think that's kind of how it works right so what I want to do is try something we could try and just do it spinning round you know checking are we in between the on and off times and all that checking if the sense is greater than or equal to 20 and then doing this but I'd like to try something a little different so what I'm gonna do is my understanding is how these tests work is like this stays the same for one of these cycles then everything is reset and the code is reset and it's almost like you know it doesn't continue like if we had a value 83 in accumulator once we go from this test run to the next run that's lost each these components all start fresh 
for each one of these test runs. So with that in mind, what I'm going to do is see if we can get it done slightly differently to just the standard loop loop. I'll be between here and here. If so, check this. If so, then put the number out. Rather than doing that, what I want to do is try and minimize power by keeping it in a sleep state until we know. So basically, the idea behind this is let us say, we'll take this example. We start off with a time here at being 84. And we know the on time is not going to be till 93. So doing anything before 93 is kind of useless. Now, in the real world, this isn't going to work because the user may at any time want to change their on and off times. But in this one, where the on and off time are going to remain constant for this test run, you can get away with doing this, I think. So basically what I'm going to do is try and figure out how long I need to sleep for. I just sleep. The, the sleep command we have been typing in sleep one normally is what we've been doing, but you can do sleep accumulator or sleep 43. You can sleep whatever number of cycles you actually want. So how about finding out how long we need to sleep for? So to do that, we would find out what the current clock is, which is going to be here on P1. And the on time. So if I subtract x0 p1, no, that doesn't work. Obviously, you can't do that. So I have to move, sorry, I have to move the on time, which is x0 into the accumulator. And subtract p1 and then if I was to sleep that number of turns that number of cycles now I'm awake so now I'm awake what do I need to do I'm gonna be in a loop here so I'm gonna put loop a little label here so the first thing I need to do is are we at the off time so this is gonna loop through this so are we at the off time so test if equal p1 and x1 and if we are equal what we're gonna do is so we've hit the off time so I need to just make sure that I reset so let's say move 0 to x2 and I'm gonna then sleep for 100 cycles. I don't think there's more than 100 cycles in one of these. Oh, maybe 200. I don't know. Just finish because we're never going to come on again once we've hit the off time. Then what we're going to do, let me just think about this. Then we need to just, just check. So I need to check. So test if greater than TGT P0 and I want greater than or equal to so I test 19 that gets 20 or more so if it's greater than 19 that's that's the same as greater than or equal to 20 I think if it is we're gonna move now, I think, as far as I know, this is P0 is the 1, so I move that. If I send a 1 here, that'll make that 100. It'll send 1, move 1 to x2. Otherwise, move 0 to x2. And jump to loop. How about that? So I'm going to hit simulate. And I'm in an infinite loop and using up thousands of power because what I need to do before I jump to loop is I obviously need to sleep for one cycle. So, and that's working pretty, pretty good. OK. 
Okay, it's not working there. So, what I'm going to do is I can do Control and click to put a breakpoint there in on this. This is run test run four. Reset it. Simulate again. So these are changing each time. Right. So the on time is 10. The off time is 50. And we start at 95. Right. So we move the 10 to the accumulator, we're going to subtract, yeah, okay, we're going to subtract 95 and we're going to get minus 85 here to sleep for, which is not right. What we actually want to do is, okay, we start off at 95, we know that 10. Yes, we know it's there's 96 ticks, and we're starting off at minus. So if we would, if we get a negative number here, we need to add 96 to it. So if I add 96 to 85, I will get a positive 11, which should then be the number of actual cycles I need to sleep for. So I sleep from 95 for 11 cycles. I should wake up on cycle 10. I think. So do I have enough sub P1? So test if less than accumulator and zero. And if so, if I am less than zero, add 96. Test run three, four, sleep eleven. Great, so that's done. Obviously, a lot more lines of code than everybody, but that good power usage and low production cost. Obviously, there is. Yeah, that's a lot of, I'm sure there are ways, like again, I'm not going to get into craziness of, of, well not craziness, but I'm not going to get into like trying to minimize them. I, I said I'd do it for the other ones. I had a problem with TIS 100 for some reason. And, I've, and I think some people are having the same problem with this game. On my PC, and I've had it with a couple of Unity titles, it just, some Unity games just blow up the CPU. Even sitting there on a menu screen, the game is doing nothing. Not the CPU, the GPU. If I run you know, one of the programs, where it, show, it shows like 100% usage, the fans are whirring, and it seemed to be windowed, and it happened minimized. So like games, like even TIS, which had no graphics in it whatsoever, and just sitting there on a menu screen was causing, unless I ran it, so there were, there were problems. This game, I'm not having any problems with, so I may, may continue on. I don't remember having problems with Infinity Factory, but, but I've had it with this and I've had it with another couple of... Uh, I, I had another game that that someone asked me to try, have a look at, Duskers, but it just wouldn't run. Well, it would run, but my... <laughs> my, my see, no, the graphics card, I think, is a uh, NVIDIA 970, so it's not like it's three years old. It wasn't a, it was a decent graphic card today. It isn't particularly, but it still should be able to handle... You know, it's not going to play Battlefield 1 and with, with everything turned on, but it should be able to handle these type of 2D um, games. So, I don't know. So anyway, so that is this uh, infrared camera. Um, what I really wanted to do was just have a look at this one and see, like, you know, the idea of this not being running, like actually using the sleep command to skip time and I, I don't know um, 
how useful it's going to be in the future. But when you know, like when you can figure out from numbers that basically because this is time that nothing else is going to happen for X or cycles, why not just sleep the device for X or Y cycles and save a bit of processing power. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this or found it helpful, um, please do drop a like. Any comments? I'd love to read them. If you like what you see, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Um, thanks again for watching. Bye now.